Hi everyone, uh, it's been a while since I've done a video. I've got uh, to do these uh, side rails today that go with this bed here. And I thought it'd be a good opportunity to uh, show a basic painting technique. Um, it's gonna be so easy to just um, paint it by hand rather than loading the paint into my sprayer. So, um, and it, it won't take too long at all. So. I uh, thought that I'd go ahead and show you um, how I brush by hand. I don't do it too often but anymore, but um, I definitely feel like I perfected the technique whenever I uh, was painting by hand. So these are, uh, this is a brand new bed, so there's not any oil or dirt and grime like you see on pieces that you would get that have been in a house for, you know, 20 plus years or whatever. Um, there's the, the box over there that it came in. So I'm not going to be doing any cleaning on it. Um, normally I would um, wipe everything down with trisodium phosphate first. Um, TSP, you can get it at Lowe's and Home Depot. I'm not sure if Walmart carries it or not. I usually just get it at Lowe's. Um, but I usually wipe it down first with some TSP and then you need to go back over it with a damp rag and um, remove any uh, extra residue that's left behind. And then I, I come to the uh, the sanding step. So that's where I'm at now. Um, I'm going to be using a little mouse sander with uh, some 220 grit sandpaper. Sometimes I use 120, but I feel like 220 is going to be best for this one. So I'll get that on there. And what I'm going to do is these sanders tend to, they're orbital sanders. So when uh, when they're moving, they're making this motion. So if you if you sand too fast, you'll get spiral marks, and if you're if you're looking to go for a smooth finish, um, that tends to show up in your paint job. So what I do is I sand in about six inch swaths at a time, and I sand everything twice. So what I'll do is I'll go from the top to the bottom, and then from the bottom to the top, and move over and just keep working my whole way down. So I'll go ahead and start now. Of course, it's going to be loud, but. Uh, you'll get the idea as I'm doing it, and um, this will be, of course, from a uh, first perspective point of view here, so I don't have a way to hold the camera up, but, but here it goes. <laughs> so if you see, basically all we're doing is scuffing up the surface. You don't really need to sand through too much. Of course, it did right there, but no biggie. Um, of course, there's the original finish and there's where it's scuffed up and what that's going to do is give it give the paint a bonding surface So it's um, much more durable than just painting right over the high gloss finish So at this point, I feel like um, the sander is kind of picking up some, um, it's kind of gunking up a little bit. You can see, if I can zoom, focus it here, see all the little beads that's um, it's part of the, the stain finish kind of coming up and gunking up on the sandpaper. So um, you can either get a screwdriver and peel it off, but I'm doing things one handed, so I'm just going to cheat and get myself another. 220 grit here. And I'll do this one over here. 
Now the reason I, I switch it out, I forgot to mention, is if I don't see it here because it didn't gunk up too much, but if it if it gunks up like that and those beadings on the sandpaper get real get real large, they'll start leaving the spiral marks even more. Um, so it's just good to remove it. And even after just that one little pass, you can see there's a little a little beading happening right there at the top left corner of the sandpaper. So by the time it gets to the end, it's usually gunking up. <laughs> One of the things you want to avoid when you're sanding is um, over sanding. Uh, right here, you can see where I sanded through to the natural wood. And the reason you want to avoid that is because uh, I know you've all heard of bleeds, or most of you have, and if you're just now starting to paint, you will. And, the, and bleeds are when you paint over something and the paint dries, especially with white, any, any lighter colors, um, it'll, it'll show through. With this piece, it'll kind of probably look reddish. if uh, if uh, if I paint over it and I'll I'll show you an example of it after I do my first coat it'll probably bleed through the reason bleeds happen is because they use an oil based finish uh, oil based stain to um, of course to stain the wood and here at the edge of it basically if you look at it let it focus here you have the natural wood you have the part of the stain and then you have the the top coat and so there's actually three layers there and what usually happens is sometimes the wood will bleed because there's oils in the wood and this will definitely bleed right here because that's the actual raw stain and bleeds happen because it's a because you're we're using a water-based paint whenever we use latex or enamel chalk paint anything like that um, it's the same thing as when you have oil in a cooking pan and you put water in it all the oil floats up to the top and so that's what's happening as the paints drying that oil is being pulled up to the top um, as the paint's drying and you get the bleed afterwards. And I'll touch back on that here in a little bit. sanded. The next step is just to dust it off. I usually use a brush. Just dust all this dust off. I'm gonna get all the dust off because of course you don't want to paint over dust. And of course this weakens the the paint job. So now I've got it dusted. Let's get the dust off my brush. Then get a rag. And Need to dampen it. A beautiful paint sink here. Just enough water to get it damp. It doesn't need to be soaking wet. You just we're gonna get the last of the, the dust up. I like to dust it off first rather than just going after it first with a wet rag because when you're when you have a ton of dust on it and you go after it with a wet rag, it likes to clump up on the rag and then fall off as you're wiping. As you as you start to do it, so this 
we'll just get the last of the dust residue off. Sorry for the shoddy camera work here. Like I said, it's too kind of difficult doing it one-handed. So, I mean, that's just a little bit of dust that was on there. Not too much, but enough that I would want to get it off. Now, you see there's no, no dust on my fingers, so it's nice and clean. A little wet, but it's about 55 degrees in here today, so it would, it would probably take a little bit to dry. At this point, um, I would touch on the bleed. So I did a little bit of over sanding here because these are these are actually sitting at a little bit of an angle, so it was a little uh, holding the camera and sanding at the same time. Uh, I just had a few problems, but it's a good opportunity to show you. Um, what I normally do is use um, spray paint to seal these in. Um, a lot of people ask questions on um, Facebook groups um, or even message me on Facebook asking me how I deal with bleeds. And it was something that I came across whenever I first started and I really didn't understand what was going on um, until just a little bit of trial and error. So like I said before, it's, it's the reason the bleeds happen is because the oil from the wood and the stain are coming up uh, as a reaction to the water-based paint, just like in oil in a pan. And so the best way to, to get around it is to use spray paint. Uh, spray paint is, um, an, is uh, an enamel paint and it blocks that in and it doesn't get affected by the bleeds. So usually two thin coats of, um, of uh, spray paint. I like to use Krylon Duo um, simply because it has, if I can find, you have to excuse all the mess over here. That's all the packaging from the from the headboard um, so this this Krylon dual is what I use and um, it's like four bucks a can or something like that at Walmart the reason I like to use it is because it has this this tip that sprays um, like a fan rather than a round I don't know if there's anything in here but when it sprays it sprays a, a nice uh, fan width rather than a round uh, tip that tends to kind of spray randomly and they tend to kind of splatter when you spray them sometimes. I'm, I'm going to skip that step for now just to show uh, the bleeds and uh, I'm pretty sure it'll happen on this and I just wanted to be able to show everyone what I'm talking about. You can either pre-treat the, the spots, the over sanding where you know it's going to bleed or if you just want to go ahead and do one or two coats over it and see if it bleeds in the first place and you can do that and then do the do the Krylon over it to block it in. I usually just spot treat anywhere I over sanded because I know it's going to happen anyways for the most part and it's best to just do it. Of course when you're doing a dresser or, or something of this size um, sometimes I end up going over most of the piece with the, with the spray paint um, if it got over sanded. So um, now it's dry, it's drying up the paint I've got, where did I put my brush here? I've got a little Linzer brush that I get from Walmart. And uh, I know some people get real big into the brushes and go out and get $40 brushes and all that. But these, these are what I've used uh, when I first started. I used them for my dry brushing and whatnot. They're like $10 at Walmart. You can actually get a two pack that has this three inch brush and a one and a half inch brush for the same price. So it's good to just go ahead and save the money and get that. Um, I say $10, but that's here in Texas. It may be more expensive elsewhere. Um, I'm going to be using uh, Mystique from Valspar. Uh, the color code on it is 7006-16, I believe. Um, I'm using Valspar Reserve, and this stuff is really, really thick. Um, I switched to it from Valspar Signature whenever they came out with this product because, uh, of course, they said it was better. Um, it's $48 a gallon here, but um, spraying uh, out of my spray rigs here that I got, um, I can usually get one coat coverage, definitely two coats, uh, rather than spraying three or four coats like I had to do with Signature. And uh, that also depends on the color. If you're doing red or yellow, which people rarely even do anyways, uh, I've had to use five or six coats before because they, they have a very uh, 
uh, transparent base and they don't cover very well. So <clears throat> here's where the the uh, the technique comes in that I was talking about. Let's see, there's a little bit of plastic right here I need to get off. And excuse my sniffles, like I said, it's a little chilly. So I just dip the, the paintbrush in a little bit, just about like that. Get a little bit of the extra off. And the first coat is gonna be really, really rough looking. And I'm just gonna brush it on real thin. And I've also watered this paint down a little bit. Um, I probably added about an ounce of water to that amount of paint. I've already used some of it in there. So what that does, it allows it to flatten a lot easier than it normally would. And uh, so as it's drying, these strokes that you're seeing are gonna kind of flatten out a little bit. And when you're doing the edges, one of, one of the things that new people do is they tend to brush this way. And when you have a lot of paint, on your brush that's where you get those the the paint running off the sides and my camera doesn't want to focus well, maybe I'm a little too close here but usually it'll it'll kind of come off the sides and if you forget to come back and touch that up it'll um, build up especially if after you're doing several coats so it's a good idea to brush this way when you're when you're at the edges so that it doesn't do that and then you can start about right here and go on down so you can see it's kind of transparent I'll dip the brush in again and work my way down I'm trying to keep the camera focused on my hand and paint at the same time I'm very sorry So at this point, now that I've done a second, uh, second area, this is already starting to dry a little bit. It's a little, it's not too dry yet, but you can come back and I, I like to knock it down. And you may not be able to see it on the camera, but it's actually flattening out a little bit and this removes a lot of the brush strokes. So what happens is if you keep doing that as you, as you paint your pieces, um, it keeps the, the the coat nice and smooth and you eliminate brush strokes. If you like brush strokes, that's cool. That's part of the style. Uh, for some people, they, they want that. I know the chalk painters uh, tend to like it. I uh, personally don't use chalk paint. And um, of course I use a sprayer. So most of my pieces have a nice smooth finish. And of course, on this piece, you can see the finish is very smooth. Now, this one's already been polyurethane, so it's nice and nice and smooth this is a satin finish um, but you can even see the wood grain in here uh, because the, the smooth finish so of course I need this to match it so again paint 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 got that on I'm gonna come back to this second area and you can see some brush strokes there and if I come back and beat it down it thins those strokes makes it smoother Dip my paint once more and hit the end. So you can see the difference in the how thin the brush strokes are here and how they look when it's newly new, newly painted. You only got to let the paint dry for about a minute or so before you knock down the knock down the brush strokes and you'll see why I do it once I finish the thing up. Let me come over to this side here. So here's where some of the over sanding was and we may start to see it here on after this coat starts to dry. If 
you're wondering what that sound is of me walking around, I have bags on my shoes. Uh, it's raining outside today and my, my work shoes are pretty worn out. They've got uh, holes in them and um, here at the my little shop and I only had a, a good pair of shoes and my wife would kill me if I painted in them so uh, I switched out my shoes and put some bags over them. <laughs> Usually works pretty well. So, um, because I spray, I tend to uh, end up with my shoes being the same color as whatever I'm spraying. So just quick strokes, real thin, you don't need to gob the paint on. Um, some people try to just, when they first starting out, they try to get the paint job done too quick and uh, put that paint on too thick and they get those brush strokes and not only is that a problem but it actually takes longer for it to dry so if you paint with these with thin coats you'll actually find out that by the time you get done doing a piece especially a dresser by the time you start on one side and do the whole thing and come back around to where you first started it'll pretty much already be dry especially if you have a fan on I'm come back here Rock this down again. You can see right here where, we, where I first started, it's already dry. Of course, the Valspar Reserve is, um, it dries pretty, pretty quick. Um, I was amazed at it. It's uh, well worth the cost for me, especially because I use a sprayer. Um, most of my time goes into prep work. My spraying time is usually only about five minutes per coat. And then I gotta wait about 30 minutes for the paint to dry. Um, here in Texas during the summer, if it's about 100 degrees out, um, it usually dries even faster than that. But I usually go work on another piece on the other side of the, of the paint booth and, and uh, just keep working, so. You can see I just Pull the paint rather than having to keep dipping my brush. I just don't have to use a whole lot of paint. And the first coat doesn't have to be perfect. So, again, you can kind of see where it's still a little wet. There's a little wet spot right there and a little brush strokey. <laughs> and you can see already just that second coat that I, whatever was left on my brush. It's already starting to, to fill in. It's, it, it covers very well. So here it's pretty dry. There's still a little wet spot right there. I'll come over here and knock this down. I don't I normally have my fan on while I'm brushing so it dries faster than this, but uh, for the sake of not having the fan whirring uh, like a tornado in the background, I have that big fan over there that I turn on. Um, have it facing the, the headboard right now because I've been doing polyurethane on it. I got one more coat to go. That'll be done. So everything looks pretty good. Um, I'll turn, I'll go ahead and cut this off for the time being. I'm going to turn my fan on for about five minutes and uh, let it dry up, um, rinse my brush out. I like to rinse my brush out in between coats, especially if I'm doing a dresser. Um, I'll, I'll rinse it out right now simply because I'm gonna be waiting about five or 10 minutes and I don't wanna come back to a, um, to a uh, dried out paintbrush. Um, simply rinsing it out uh, on every coat will let your paint brushes last a lot longer. I just use uh, water under the sink and then I have a little I guess I can go ahead and show you the I won't be able to do it while I'm holding the camera but um, see I've got this brush here that I use and I just run it under the water and try to get as much out as I can first and then I'll press it into the sink like this and use the brush to scrape out the paint and that'll make your brushes last a, a whole lot longer when I first started, I didn't realize that uh, I needed to, they needed to be cleaned out that often. And once, once you're, when your brush starts feeling heavy or when you're painting, it starts making a, a wet sound, 
that's because it's, it's got a whole lot of paint on it and um, if you keep painting the, the paint up higher on the brush is going to dry a lot faster and that'll stiffen your bristles so uh, just try to make it a habit to clean it out and uh, it'll last you a lot longer and you won't have to worry about um, getting funky paint strokes whenever you're you're painting with a gobbed up brush so I'll go ahead and stop this and uh, turn the fan on it and when uh, when I come back I'll go ahead and do the second coat um, probably it'll probably probably do three or four coats on it and that sounds like it may be a lot but you'll see the the end result will be uh, a lot better and it doesn't take near as long as it as it might sound so I'll be back in just a second All right, it's been about 10 minutes and uh, the finish is uh, nice and dry. Um, I, I wanted to add, I, I took my ring off. I know it was on in the in the previous steps, but um, I forgot to take it off. And I wanted to mention that make sure you take your, your jewelry off your hands. Um, some of y'all may think that's an obvious choice so you don't get paint all over it. But uh, I tend to have mine on all the time. and um, It's got paint all in it. I have to clean it pretty regularly but the reason I say to take it off is because you tend to you know do this number here you want to feel the see if it's dry and see how smooth it is and the ring will scratch up your finish um, ladies also and, and even some guys make sure you're you know, you know watch your nails uh, guys trim your nails so that when you're working on stuff that you don't scrape the finish off and, and uh, want to pull your hair out so it's uh, ready to uh, get its second coat and so with the first coat, um, like I showed you, we, I just did it in short uh, swaths, about, I don't know, a foot, foot and a half uh, wide. Um, I, I tend to do that just because I don't want to um, do, try to try to do the whole piece and, you know, big old long strokes and the, uh, the paint dry before I'm, before I'm ready. Um, as you start to paint when you're doing this this particular technique you'll actually notice that you'll need a little bit more paint as you're going along and I'll actually show you a way it's a little bit um, more advanced than just doing the, the little swaths with a, a little bit of paint on your brush so what I'll do is I'll get more paint on the brush and uh, apply it to a larger area and um, work on pulling the paint wherever I need it so once you once you kind of get it, the process down and you want to work a little bit faster, you can add more paint to the brush. Um, you see, I'll got more on there and took less off on the edge of the can. And what I'll do is do a larger area, just like that, and then you can start pulling the paint wherever you need it. And you can get to where you get uh, get used to everything, uh, you know, the process and uh, work in larger areas. If you find you have more paint down on one end, just push it down to the other end. The paint will come off on your brush and you can work larger areas. So you can see just with the amount that I put on there this time. I uh, did half of the half of the side rail. So again, I'll come over and I'll do the same thing on this edge, on this end. Blend it here at the middle. So, because I used more paint that time, um, I know before I said, you know, you apply one section, go to the next sec section, and after that's applied, come back and knock it down. Um, there's more paint on this on this application, so um, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side before I come back and knock it down and let it let it dry a little bit. You can see 
Now, not every paint is like this, but this Valspar Reserve covers really, really well. You can see the difference in the, um, the, the coverage there. And you can see the brush strokes right now. You'll notice the difference whenever I come back and knock it down. So, I'll hit the other side. The bleeds really didn't show too much after the first coat. So I went ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the second cone on. I really wanna be able to show everyone what I'm talking about with those bleeds. They're so annoying when you're, when you're starting out and trying to figure everything out. Didn't exactly get half of it that time, so I'll use a little bit more paint on the other side. Now if you have these little edges like this when you're when you're brushing um, with your brush horizontal and you can't get these edges just turn your brush and boop, 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 clean them up to get your coverage could probably use a little bit more paint down here but I'll get it on the next coat. I'll come back over here, and knock out these brush strokes. Ooh, dried quicker than I thought. If it if you if it gets too tacky, um, right now it's starting to feel a little bit tacky. There's a kind of a uh, window of time that you have to be able to do this so make sure if you're um, doing this um, this way like I said doing it quicker with using more paint in a larger area make sure you give yourself enough time to go back and knock down those previous brush strokes <clears throat> So there's the second coat. Um, looking like it's probably going to need four coats to get it looking good. Um, so I'll turn the fan on it again and uh, start on the other coats. Of course at this point uh, everything kind of gets redundant. I'm going to be doing the same thing uh, for every single coat. Um, just using a little bit more paint uh, for every coat. And so I'll go ahead and rinse my brush out again, um, turn the fan on, and I'll come back and get the other coats on. It's been about another 10 minutes, and the uh, second coat's dry, nice and dry. Um, I was expecting the bleeds to kind of show up more uh, by this time, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of show what there is. I think maybe because it's just a little bit, you know, it's not a whole lot that got over sanded, but let's see if I can show, if I can get it to focus well enough. You can see there's a little bit of red right there, and that that is a bleed. It's not really noticeable on this. It's kind of more noticeable right here. Um, there's a little bit of a red strip right here. Um, usually bleeds are a lot more noticeable and bigger areas um, so just to for uh, teaching sake I'll go ahead and get after it with this Krylon and show you what I normally do um, when you when you're spraying spray paint and like I said I recommend getting uh, a can similar to this that has the 
the fan spray rather than a round spray like a, a traditional uh, spray can. Um, you don't you don't want to go at it heavy. You don't it doesn't need to be real uh, real thick. And basically, what you're going to do is you just do a, a light. You know, hold the can back. See, I'm holding it back here about 10 inches or so, and you're just going to kind of spritz it. If I can record and spray at the same time here um, actually a little bit closer this is about six inches and just a quick spritz like that will do the job and like I said I normally do two uh, uh, two applications that way so here where the bleeds are I'm just going to just like that um, the other bleed is right here this can is actually running out but Come at it from the other side here. There's a little spritz there. No, and it's splattered, so I'll clean that up with my hand. And yes, it took some of the paint off, but no big deal. I can fix that. Um, this stuff usually dries pretty fast, so um, hopefully this doesn't mess up the audio, but I'm going to turn the fan on it while I'm painting. So that'll, that'll dry by the time I get to it. No, nope. you know what? Forget that, it's too loud. So hopefully, because it was just a little bit, it should dry pretty fast. Eh, yeah, it's pretty dry. It's dry. Now I gotta make sure I fix that. That's what, that's the story of a shabby chic painter's life right there. Something always messing up. Um, and when you're starting out, and uh, even if you've done it for a while, don't don't get flustered by mistakes like that. Um, don't don't give up. There's always a way to fix it. Um, there was a lady that took one of my classes, uh, one of my hands-on classes, where I have the students bring in uh, one of their own pieces and and uh, teach them the techniques hand-on and let them go at it and go around and critique them and help them. And the lady. Uh, painted this piece green and um, by the time she got to the second coat it had a real cool dry brush look and I was like oh you know what that looks pretty good let's you, you can probably just leave it like that she's like no I want to paint it some more and um, about 30 minutes later she was uh, uh, the ladies were kind of gathered around her and she was crying and said that she wanted to leave and she just got um, upset because it wasn't going her way and I was just like no hold on let's there's always a way you can fix it so what we ended up doing is distressing it a little bit and then we put a brown glaze over it and it ended up being the best piece of, of the class out of 15 people and uh, one lady even offered to buy it from her so there's don't give up there's always a way to fix it just kind of take a break and take a step back and look at it and see what else you can do to fix it, um, it just because you mess up something doesn't mean you have to give up or even um, strip the whole thing down and start over. It's always something that you can do. So I'll get started on the third coat. Here. I try to not shake the camera so much this time. I've been watching the videos in between drying times and I know I get a little bit squirrely. I need a little bit more paint. Like I said, it starts to get where you need a little bit more paint to cover everything. You can see it's starting to fill in pretty nice. Starting to cover well. I think after this coat, it'll be done. <clears throat> Make sure when you, as you're working in a different section, just come back and blend where you stopped last time while the paint's still wet so it all looks nice and uniform and you're not, um, if you, if you let it dry right here before you start to do your second coat or if you don't come back and blend it in, then what you'll have it, you'll have an unevenness, um, when you come, come back on your next coat, it's usually not too noticeable, but uh, if you haven't noticed yet, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I like to point out whatever, whatever I'm seeing with with my um, with my eyes. 
when I when I started out, I used to stress out about so many little things, and people started telling me it's called the artist's the artist's eye, and I guess it's just I just want everything to be perfect. <laughs> so I'll come back and you can see we've got the brush strokes again. I'm going to use that little knockdown method that I talked about. The paint started to dry just a little bit and it knocks down real nice. It's a lot better. And this, really the main point of this is, you know, some I see people talking about um, sanding their, their paint job down after they've after they're finished to get it smooth and this process eliminates having to do that um, I tried that when I first started out and it's if y'all have done it before you will know that sometimes the paint comes off and gunks up the sandpaper or likes to try to peel off or something there's just so many things that like to go wrong um, and again, like I said, instead of gobbing the paint on and having a longer dry time, this will uh, allow you to paint faster. And I think when I was painting by hand, on average, a dresser would take me about four to five hours, maybe six if it was a big one and had like doors and stuff. But start to finish, um, and you know, that's including proper prep. I've, I'm always big on prep work. It's very important for the to make sure that you have a, a durable coat and a durable uh, product, especially if you're selling stuff and you want it to last. Um, you know, I take, of course, we take all the hardware off and then clean it with the TSP, uh, wipe it down again with a damp rag, and then do uh, sand it twice. And again, like I showed you, you doesn't have to, you don't have to sand all the way down. It doesn't have to be a big, huge ordeal. Um, and then clean it off again and then you can do your painting and waxing or whatever you want to top coat with. I, of course I top coat with polyurethane. But you know with this process and having a fan on it while you're painting you get it done real quick. And I really don't think four or five hours is, is too much time to get a piece done. Yeah, I covered up those little mess ups pretty good where I touched it earlier with the or I had to clean up those Krylon splatters and that normally doesn't happen that that paint can was pretty empty and I was trying to extend it I probably have another one around here somewhere but I'm not gonna roam around looking for it yeah I think y'all get the gist of the idea then I'll do more videos and I I have a um, Pretty cool hutch right here that I'm gonna be working on next with the or China cabinet actually with the with the hutch here and there'll be plenty of bleeds and opportunities for me to show you how to fix them. Really, the main point of this video is I want to show this paint technique that uh, can help out some people that are, uh, want to get a smoother finish or learn how to paint faster. little bit more for that last end here actually probably think I got too much paint for it and again on the edges brush brush off the edge so that you don't do this number here and I swear it's got to focus for me so I can show you guys Mm -mm -mm. There, that little drip right there. You want to make sure that you don't do that on the edges and especially leave it there. It's, sometimes it just happens and you can just get your finger and run it along, clean it up on this piece. That, that little um, stuff hanging off the edge isn't going to matter because no one's ever going to see that. Come back and knock everything down again. So 
So you should be able to see the brush strokes thinning out, getting smooth. Starting to look good. Oh, there's the third coat. And of course, it's still a little tacky. You can see my old fingerprints I did there. Don't ever be afraid to touch it if you want to see if it's wet or not. You just don't need to, don't press on it real, real hard. Um, when you're when you're painting like this, your paint coat is so thin that you can touch it. You're not going to get, uh, you're not going to smear tacky paint like you would if you uh, painted a whole bunch on there and you're trying to test it to see if it's dry. You can just touch it a little bit and if it's still wet, just brush over it and fix your fingerprints. There's a third coat. Um, same thing as before. Clean the brush out. Let it dry for another 10 minutes. I'll turn the fan on it and we'll come back and do the final coat. Okay, another 10 minutes and our third coat's dry and feeling a little bit repetitive now, but we're going to do the same thing for the fourth coat. This should be the final coat. And, and I'll probably do this one in smaller sections just because it's going to need more paint. Once you get to this point, you'll you'll see um, that you know a little bit more paint is needed to uh, cover everything. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Um, it seems like maybe just because uh, there's a little bit rougher coat underneath from the from the final from the previous coat, uh, it just needs a little bit more to uh, to cover everything. Um, one thing I was thinking about earlier that I didn't mention is I don't have this problem with these lens or brushes, but sometimes you get brushes that the bristles like to fall out on uh, while you're painting. And uh, like I said, I'm not, I haven't seen it happen on this. Um, it actually there is something right there, it's like a little piece of dust. And if you get something like that, just use your finger and rub it and get it off. If it's a big old bristle, um, rub it towards the edge until it comes off and then paint over it and fix it. Um, that's one of the most annoying things when bristles come off in your paint job. Um, that's why I've stuck with these brushes because they don't do that. And uh, I know some of the, some people say the more expensive brushes don't do that. I bought a a Purdy brush. I'm not trying to be cute. I'm the brand Purdy, P-U-R-D-Y. Um, when I first started, because I thought it would be a better brush, and um, boy, the bristles fell off like crazy in that thing. And uh, so I went back to to using this again, and the lens are brushes, and they're they're great. So again, now I'm coming back and I'm knocking down all of the the um, the brush strokes because I know this is going to be the final coat and I definitely want it to be smooth. That looks pretty good. You can still see some strokes a little, little bit. It's 
because it's still wet and when it dries you really won't be able to see it and it'll look nice and smooth and this these are going to be uh, glazed to match to match that I have to get that dirty looking color on it so the cool thing is, is I really don't even have to worry too much about brush strokes of course I don't want big huge ones on it um, Because it'll it'll show up more but with the glazing it takes out you can get around a lot of the imperfections when you're glazing and I'll go ahead and record the glazing I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it one-handed yet so it'll I'll test it I'll, I'll try it out but I know a lot of people have asked how I do my glazing and um, I, I use oil-based stain for my glazing it's not really uh, something that most people do. It's just the way that I learned. When, when I got into painting, I was doing what you're doing right now, watching videos on YouTube and looking at people's blogs. And um, I came across someone who was, uh, had a video about glazing. I don't even know if I looked it up or if I just stumbled, stumbled upon it. But they used a stain to glaze. Um, a, uh, some sort of built-in shelving in their in their house and I thought it looked so cool and tried it out now the only thing is with uh, with glazing with stain is that in, in my when I first tried it of course I was using I was you know brushing and I was still a beginner and uh, using uh, wax as my top coat and um, wax is, is great to use if you're starting out you don't have the ability to use polyurethane there's tons of waxes that are um, very durable and um, it, the thing is is when you when when I go uh, ran out of memory here on my camera and it was dying also as I was finishing the uh, the last coat here on this end but basically yeah, y'all know the steps by now. I just I was pretty much done down here, and I uh, knocked down the uh, brush stroke, so it's nice and smooth now. Um, you can see the finish is it looks really, really, really nice. And so I'm gonna do the glazing now. Um, uh, like I said, I do the glazing with with stain. And what I was mentioning in the video before is when I first started is uh you know i learned how to do the glazing with uh, with wood stain and um little did i know is that the wax top coat that i was using at the time i was using the, that min wax furniture wax to top coat my pieces um, that actually pulls the wax off at least it does when uh shortly after glazing it and uh, i remember at the time because this is two years now two years ago um i i glazed it and i let it sit in the storage where I was where I was painting at the time I let it sit for a day and came back and glazed it and it was just pulling pulling the glaze off and I'll put a picture up um, here in the video uh, I know it's on my computer and show you the piece it really turned out pretty ugly but I, I still ended up selling it so I've definitely mastered it now but I think maybe if you if you insist on doing this process the way that I do it then if you let it sit for uh, about a week or so and let the stain really dry on there that it would probably work um, No guarantees though. Like I said, I, I haven't used wax to top coat any of my glaze stuff since then now if you're glazing with a uh, with a traditional glaze, which is uh, latex based um, you can buy the products at um, uh, Lowe's and Home Depot and probably other places that, that are pre-mixed, but I if I ever have to use a traditional glaze I use a Valspar clear mixing glaze and um, it's just a, um, a kind of whitish clear glaze and you can uh, pour a little bit in a cup, get yourself a paint stir and um, a, you know, if you say you want a black glaze you can just put a little bit of black paint in it and stir it up until you get the color that you want and it basically extends the paint and allows you to uh, do the glazing. The only difference is, is that the stain uh, actually tints the color of the paint. You can see that's the uh, that's the color now and that's what it'll look like when it's done um, with a traditional glaze it it doesn't do that it um, gives it a little bit of, of tinting but uh, it, the other difference too is you have to use a damp rag and constantly be folding the rag 
to get a clean part of the rag to wipe the glaze off. But it's essentially the same technique. Um, like I said, again, I top coat all my pieces with polyurethane, so that's how I, I get away with uh, being able to use the stain as my glaze. So I'll uh, go ahead and get started here. I just use these um, cheap uh, throwaway brushes, what I call them. They're um, about a dollar fifty or so at Walmart. And um, yeah, you could clean out the brush if you wanted with mineral spirits, but why would I do that? It just takes too long and then you got to dispose of the mineral spirits. So um, I just throw them away after I'm done with them. I, I use them for a while though because I'm glazing so much. So you see this one's well worn and it's even stained uh, from the original, I guess, pine color that it was before. So. We'll get the stain, and this stain is a little thick because it's been, I had the top open on it and it's kind of dried out, but it still works. And just apply it to the piece. And when doing a, a dresser, um, I, I do s sections at a time because this will dry out on you and it, when it does, it gets real sticky and it's, it's hard to, um, to get it off. Um, with this uh, sideboard, I'll, I'll be able to do the whole thing at once, and I'll, I'll want to because I don't want to um, worry about doing sections at a time and blending it and all that. So if you're doing a piece that's um, got a lot of detail in it, you'll just basically want to take your brush and do this number here and push in to get uh, push the stain into the crevices and all that and when it when you wipe it off later on it'll leave all that stuff in the crevices and highlight the detail just like how this is here you know especially up top that's all that stain left in the detail I'll well, just brush it on also while I was uh, waiting for my phone to charge back up uh, I painted the, the sides here they needed to be done um, I just did a couple quick coats on that and it dried real fast and this stuff is really thick. It's going to be hard to get off. So I'm trying to rush and get it all on here. You don't have to get a whole lot on, but if you if you get it too thin, it, it'll dry quicker. I'll go ahead and hit this part down here. Oops. I'll just take some of this off here and put it down here. all on now and then get a rag and just fold it up and you start wiping it away it doesn't have to be perfect on the first wipe well this is difficult to do one-handed I'll tell you that you see how it started nice and clean and started to get like that that's because the rag is dirtied up so I'll normally flip it and get a cleaner edge to do it with and you can see it'll take more of it off you constantly have to be working the rag and this thing's going to fall off here and what I try to do is get the first bit off first because it's going to saturate the, the rag the most and then just flip it over and it is a physical process <laughs> can hear me already starting to run out of breath just keep going back and forth and rubbing it and then you can come back all these little areas where you see the rag marks like this. If you just flip your rag over, like again, to a clean area, you can blend it all in. Let's get it so it has a pretty clean look. This is usually a little bit easier with 
stain that hasn't dried out. So and definitely easier when you're not doing it one-handed. So got that done. Then I'll come down here and hit this. It's dark, it's hard to see there, but it takes quite a bit of effort to get it done right. A bit of elbow grease, and that's whew, that's the final product there. So just to make things easier on myself, I'll go ahead and stop it here. Um, that's pretty much how you paint a piece from start to, to finish. I know this is a simple example with a nice flat uh, sideboard. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll do some videos later of doing uh, bigger pieces so you can see what all goes into it. I'll be doing those by my spray gun, so I'm, I'm not going to spend the time painting it by hand. Um, I think this video shows the the uh, the brushing technique pretty well and uh, I'll probably uh, add on an additional portion to this video of spraying the polyurethane. Um, there's some people that have gone out and bought sprayers and they're wanting to do polyurethane and running into problems with it. It, it does have a high learning curve it's pretty uh it's pretty annoying at first but well worth the effort is you can see it just looks so looks so professional it looks like it came from the from a store this way um so after i finish this up i'll do the polyurethane and see if i can't get a video of uh of doing that all right